Hi, I'm the Scrub and you're here for one reason. This is one of my most requested videos that I've ever had. Although I'm glad to have finished it because this is my longest guide so far and I don't think I can make it any more simplified. Still, the angel of blood awaits us at the end of all this. Don't worry though, because at least you thirsty ones will have something to stare at for the opening part of this raid. Time to learn about the Orborn Monastery. Simplified. Head up the hill and you'll come to three harpies. They will throw out circular AoEs underneath random alliance members called Blasphemous Howl. Dodge out of the AoEs as best you can. They will also have a staring contest called Devitalize. If you are still looking at this when it goes off, you'll be inflicted with a 12 second Asunerable Doom debuff. This will need to be dispelled quickly or else you'll become instant compost. Destroy the adds as quickly as you can. When all three adds have been defeated, a monastic ghost will appear in the middle of the arena and a bunch of monastic skeletons will appear on the sides. Dark Eruption is a small AoE underneath random players. Lingering Resentment is what I get from my parents for trying to be a YouTube. A large point blank AOE underneath a random party member. If you get hit by this, it will be an 18 second Asunerable Disease debuff that will cause your movement to slow down and HP recovery to be reduced. It will turn to one side of the arena and cast Unfinished Business, which is a giant 180 degree AOE in the direction it's facing. If you don't get out of this, it will give you a 10 second Unasunerable Confusion debuff, which will cause you to attack your fellow party members for 10 seconds. Destroy all the ads as fast as you can and follow the path up the stairs where a jump pad will activate. Head over this jump pad and you'll be taken to the first boss, Mustadio. Energy bursts of room wide AOE. Arm Shot is a tank buster. Mustadio will then cast either left or right hand gone. This will be slightly larger than a 180 degree AoE on his left or right side. You'll just need to either move to the opposite side or move quite far away from Mustadio to dodge the attack. If you get hit by this, it will give you a Vuln stack. Mustadio will then cast the opposite hand gone of whichever one it didn't cast first. So if it casts left first, it will now cast right, and if it casts right first, it will now cast left. Move to the opposite side of Mustadio to dodge the attack. The cast of maintenance will tether to robots around the arena. The orange tether will cause the robot on the wall to wake up and perform a linear AoE across the arena from where it's located. If you get hit by any AoE for this or any future maintenance mechanic, it will give you a Vuln stack per AoE you are hit by. Mustadio will say, I see you, and give random alliance members a red targeting circle. This will change into a sonar-like AoE underneath the targeted players and track them wherever they go. Eventually, they will lock in place. A few seconds after this, they will explode with the move Searchlight. If you are in it when it goes off, it will give you a Vuln stack. Mustadio will then cast Analysis. This will give you a debuff of either left, right, or back unseen. You'll also get a circle around you with one side of the circle missing. You'll need to keep this in mind. Mustadio will then disappear from the arena. The first time this happens, a short cutscene will play which will show Mustadio loading a rifle. You will need to locate which of the two platforms Mustadio is standing on and then turn your character around to ensure that whichever side of the circle is missing is facing Mustadio. Mustadio will then cast Last Testament. If you have done this correctly, Mustadio will hit you for 90% of your health and you'll be down for the count for a few seconds before being able to resume fighting. If you have not done this correctly, the knock will hit you back and instantly kill you. Ballistic Missile targets random alliance members with point blank AoEs. Just spread these out as much as possible. Leg Shot will spawn landmines underneath the feet of random random players. This will give you an suitable paralysis debuff if you get hit by it. The next maintenance cast will target two robots on the floor with a blue tether. The robots on the inside are on the corners of four squares. When these are awakened with maintenance, they will create an AoE on all the squares they are touching. So you just need to move away from the quadrant where the awakened robot is located. Every cast of maintenance after this will have four orange tethers on the outside and two blue tethers on the inside. So the safe spots are a lot smaller than what you might realize. If you get lost during any of the maintenance casts, just follow the rest of the group. And remember that getting hit by one is still okay, as getting hit by two or more can instantly instantly delete you. Mustadio will overlap and repeat mechanics until he has been defeated. Head across the jump pad in the corner and go down the stairs on the right. Follow the path around until you head down the stairs to the second boss, Agrius. When you start the fight, there will be a duty action button that will appear in your UI. Keep this in mind for later. Divine Light is a room wide AoE. Thunder Slash is a cleaving conal AoE tank buster, so don't stand with the tank. There will be two pads of shields that will appear on the ground. If you walk across these pads, you'll temporarily gain the buff of Shield Bearer and gain the duty action of Heavenly Shield. Agrius will then cast Judgment Blade. You will need to be facing Agrius and use the Heavenly Shield duty action. It is important that you don't move, as moving or performing any other action will cancel the Heavenly Shield. Doing this correctly will mean the Judgment Blade will not affect you. If you don't get the shield up in time or you're facing the wrong way, you'll be knocked back and given a Vuln stack. After another room wide and tank buster, Agrius will cast Cleansing Flame. This will put point blank AoEs on random alliance members. Just spread out and don't overlap these. Agrius will move slightly to the north side of the arena and cast Cleansing Strike. This will stun one of the alliances with glowing swords above them. This alliance will be transported to a different smaller arena where there will be pads of swords on one side. Run across the pad to gain the buff of Sword Bearer, and the duty action button will change to Heavenly Sword. Everyone in this alliance will be given the debuff of Doom. This debuff will have a 75 second countdown. If the party does not kill all of the adds, the Doom will expire and you will instantly die. There will be two kinds of adds in the area, a Black Tainted Soul and a White Taintless Soul. The Black Tainted Soul will spawn in and slowly move towards the flame in the middle of the area. It can just be DPS down as usual. If it reaches the flame, it will explode in a high damaging room wide and give everyone a Vuln stack. The White Taintless Soul can only be destroyed by the duty action button of Heavenly Sword. 
you will need to target them and use the duty action to instantly defeat them. If you leave them alive for too long, they will start casting Dark Flare, which is a 10 second cast. Halfway through the cast, they will get a countdown above their head from 5. If this reaches 0, it will explode and give everyone a Vuln stack. After all of the abs have been defeated, you will return to the arena. While this party is in the other area, the other two alliances that are not stunned will also have the pads of swords the players will need to walk over to get the sword bearer buff. Agrius will move to the middle of the room and cast Consecration. One entire alliance will be stunned, thrown to different points in the area, and encased in crystals. Agrius will create multiple clones of itself around the arena and cast North Swain Strike. This will create straight line AoEs through the crystals around the arena. These AoEs will instantly one-shot you so you cannot be in them when they go off. Although the crystals can be targeted, they can only be destroyed with a Heavenly Sword duty action. If you are encased in a crystal, you can't do anything until you are freed. If you are not freed by the time the AoEs go off, you will instantly die. After another room wide and tank buster, Agrius will target two people in the alliance with a cast of Hallowed Bolt. These players will get a red marker over their heads. There will be a combination of back-to-back -back AoEs underneath where these players are standing when the cast ends. It will either be a point blank AoE followed by a donut AoE or a donut AoE followed by a point blank AoE. I would recommend to try and stack these up as best you can to maximize the safe zone as the AoEs can be deceptively large. If you get hit by any of the AoEs, you'll get a Vuln stack. Following this is another cleansing flame of point blank AoEs on random players. Then it's another Judgment Blade and another room wide AoE before Agrius will become untargetable and spawn in three adds. Two Sword Knights and one Shield Knight. All three tanks will need to take one add each as everyone separates into their alliance groups. Tanks and alliances A and C will take a Sword Knight and Alliance B will take the Shield Knight. A bar labeled Holy Blade will appear. If this bar fills up, Agrius will enrage and wipe the alliance. Two pads of shields and two pads of swords will appear in the arena. The Shield Knight will tether itself to four emblazoned shields. These shields will cause the Shield Knight to become invulnerable until they are destroyed. The only way to destroy them is by using the duty action of Heavenly Sword. The two Sword Knights will cast Mortal Blow. These are very large point blank AoEs. You can block the attack by using the duty action of Heavenly Shield if you can't get out of the AoE. If you don't do this, you will get a Vuln stack per AoE you are standing in. Once all three ads have been defeated, Agrius will become targetable again. She will perform her ultimate called Heavenly Judgment. Agrius will tether herself to one player in each alliance and cast Divine Ruination. The shield pads will then appear in the arena. The tethered players will need to grab Heavenly Shield, move away from the rest of the alliance, and use the duty action. Agrius will throw a straight line AoE through where these players are located. Anyone who doesn't have a shield and is caught in an AoE will get a Vuln stack. Even if I don't have a tether, I normally grab a shield and use it anyway in case someone with the tether runs near me. From here, mechanics will begin to repeat until Agrius has been defeated. Head through to the next area and follow the path down. In the next arena, three Night Stalkers will assemble themselves. They don't do any mechanics and can be easily defeated. When all three have been defeated, the Dark Crusader will assemble itself. It will move to the middle of the room and cast Dark Rite. This is a mechanic similar to the final boss of the Great Google Library. Several pads with smaller circles inside them will appear. The number of smaller circles in a pad is how many people you need to stand on the pad to lock it down. If you fail to lock down a pad by the time Dark Rite finishes spawning, it will spawn in an ad which will need to be defeated quickly. Noah Hionto is a room wide AoE. It will target a member of each alliance with a thick straight line AoE called Eternal Wave. It will do this mechanic twice in a row. Just dodge out of these as best you can. After three room wide AoEs, it will move back into the middle of the room and cast another Dark Rite. Lock down all of the circles as fast as possible. From here, mechanics will repeat until it has been defeated. Head out of the arena and turn left. Follow the path until you get to the jump pad to launch yourself to the next boss, Count Sidophilus Orlando, aka the Thunder God. The alliances will need to split into their parties. Alliance A will go to the left, Alliance C will go to the right, and Alliance B can stay where everyone lands in the arena. Because they know what they've done. When you pull the boss, all three tanks will start taking auto attacks. The first cast is called Cleansing Strike. This will reduce everyone in the alliance to one health and give everyone a 15 second doom debuff. This is why we stay in our parties as if you get separated, you won't be able to be healed in time. The only way to dispel the doom is to be healed back to full health. Healers will need to quickly heal up everyone in their party before the doom debuff expires and instantly kills not anyone at full health. The next cast is called TG Holy Sword. This will be one of three casts. For the first one, Thunder God will hold out the swords over three segments in the arena. The swords will be slammed down onto the circular segment and affect the area in a circular AoE that is larger than what you're probably anticipating. But as long as you're in a circular segment that doesn't have a sword above it, then you're probably fine. The next TG Holy Sword will either be a get in or get out mechanic. If he raises his swords up so they are close to him, he will spin around in a large point blank AoE. The easiest way to avoid this is to just get away from the boss towards the back half of any of the circular segments in the arena. If he stabs the swords into the ground, you'll need to run forward into his hitbox to avoid the massive donut AoE. One person in each alliance will get a black marker over their head and a huge red circle outline around them while Thunder God casts the move Shadow Blade. When this cast ends, wherever these players are standing will have an expanding dark sphere placed on that spot. I'd highly recommend that the circles get placed at the back of the circular segments around the arena as far away from Thunder God as possible. If you run through a sphere, you will get a harsh bleeding debuff for every tick that you are inside the sphere. But it is very important that you don't overlap these spheres as they will explode and the entire alliance will get bleeding debuff stacks for each sphere that explodes. Thunder God will cast Crush Hell. All three tanks will be targeted with four hits. Every hit will inflict a stack of physical vulnerability up. Then Crush Helm will finish casting and slam into 
into the tank. The more physical vulns the tank has, the harder the move will hit for. Healers can use Asuna to remove the physical vulna before Crush Helm finishes casting so the move doesn't hit as hard. There will be another 2 TG Holy Swords back to back before Thunder God starts casting Dusk Blade. Six smaller pads will appear on parts of the circular segments close to Thunder God. There will need to be at least three players on each pad. When the pad has three players in it, transparent spikes will rise from the circle to indicate that it has the required number of people in it. It's pretty easy to split up each alliance into light parties and have a smaller party stand on each pad to solve the mechanic. Each pad missed will cause a big hit of damage. If enough pads are missed, it can wipe the alliance. One player in each alliance will get a yellow circle with a pulsating arrow behind it. This will be a tracking AoE that will follow you for several hits. Normally, the players will always go to the left for this mechanic. So from the direction that you are facing while you're beating up Thunder God, turn left and move around to the next alliance. This should ensure not only your safety, but the safety of everyone else in the rest of the alliance. The rest of your party can just slightly move to the right to avoid the first hit, and they should be safe as it moves away from them. If you end up getting hit by any of the AoEs, you'll get a Vuln stack for each time you are hit, and it can easily kill you if you're hit a number of times. When the AoEs stop following you, you can return to your party. After this, everyone will be thrown into the air and a new platform will spawn underneath everyone's feet. Three ephemeral knights will spawn in. Tanks of each alliance will need to take one of these adds. There will be a bar labeled sword play that will appear. If this bar fills, Thunder God will wipe the alliance. One player in each alliance will get the red marker of Hallowed Bolt. This is the same marker from the second boss of this alliance raid. It will be a combination of back-to-back -back AoEs underneath where these players are standing when the cast ends. It will either be a point blank AoE followed by a donut AoE or a donut AoE followed by a point blank AoE. Just dodge between the AoEs as best you can. I'd recommend trying to put the AoE as close to the wall as possible but not too far away from your alliance so you aren't forcing other alliances to move with your AoE. If you get hit by either of these AoEs, it will give you an Asunable Electrocution dot tick. Then one player in each alliance will get a stack marker. These stack markers will give you magic vulnerability up so you cannot group up these stacks or else it will kill everyone in the stacks. It can also tether itself to one alliance member and cast Divine Ruination. When this cast ends, the ad will cast a straight line AoE through where this player is standing. As soon as you've defeated your knight, you can help other alliances with their ads. Once all three knights have been defeated, Thunder God will perform his ultimate called Balance Asunder. This will break the large circular platform and everyone will turn to the original arena. Another two TG Holy Swords will happen back to back, followed by one player in each alliance getting Crush Weapon. Again, go to the left. While this is happening, there will be a Crush Helm Tank Buster with the Asunable Physical Vulnerability Up debuff and another TG Holy Sword. The next cast of TG Holy Sword will be a slow cast. Thunder God will hover his three swords, one at a time, over adjoining segments in the arena. You just need to not be in a segment that will be hit. The three segments will explode, one at a time. After these go off, you can return to your alliance spot. Then it will be another cleansing strike. Healers, get ready to heal up a storm. Then Thunder God will tether the tank and start casting Crush Armor. Under no circumstances is the tank allowed to take this tether, as every hit will give a 20 second unassumable physical vulnerability up. Four other players in the party will need to intercept the tether one at a time and ensure that they get hit instead of the tank. If you take two tether hits, you will instantly understand what tenderized meat feels like. Following this, two players in each alliance will get Shadow Blade. So every single player who gets this marker will have to go to their own circle, one to the left and right of where the party spot is, and stay up the back until the sphere is dropped off. If you end up overlapping any of the circles, they will definitely explode and give out bleeding debuffs to the entire alliance. As the spheres are expanding, there will be another Crush Helm Tank Buster with the Asunable Physical Vulnerability Up debuff. If you've had a lot of deaths in this fight or your DPS is a little low, Thunder God will cast Crush Accessory and cover the entire arena in an AoE except for six small circles on the outside of the circular segments. In one of these segments near each alliance will be a shard called Ice Wolf. Try and get into this safe spot with the shard as fast as you can. When Crush Accessory finishes casting, the entire arena will be coated in a layer of ice that will give you the Frostbite debuff if you're standing in it. The Ice Wolf shards will start casting Burst. If they explode, they will inflict a vulnerability up to everyone in the alliance and deal incredibly high damage. Destroy the Ice Wolf as fast as you can. When the arena returns to normal, mechanics will repeat until Thunder God has been defeated. Run over the final jump pad and head down the stairs to go to the next area and meet the final boss, Ultima the High Seraph. Holy Fall will create point blank AoEs underneath random alliance members. Just dodge out of them to avoid them. Aura Light will create a large AoE where Ultima is, along with three straight line AoEs through one player in each alliance. The straight line AoEs will turn into Ice Walls. If you're caught in this AoE, you'll be petrified, frozen in place, and be unable to move for several seconds until the Ice Wall dissipates. When everything goes off, several more Holy Fall point blank AoEs will be created underneath random players while also targeting other players with an AoE on top of them. Everyone will need to dodge away from the Holy Fall AoEs on the ground, and the AoE targeted players will need to spread out. As the AoEs go off, the arena will return to normal. Ultima will then cast Grand Cross. This will cause three very large aura sites to land in the arena. They will throw out straight line AoEs in a plus pattern from where they land. There will
there will only be one safe spot in the entire arena, which will be underneath Ultima. You'll just need to keep an eye out for which aura site will cleave through one half of where Ultima is situated. The safe spot will always be the other side. For every AoE you get hit by, you'll get a Vuln stack. Ultima will cast Demi Aquarius. This will summon Fanfrit to the arena. Fanfrit will cast Dark Ewer. This will create jets of water that will travel in a straight line across the arena. You'll get damage for every tick that you're in a jet of water. While this is going on, there'll be another Aura Light. Then Ultima will cast Demi Ares. This will summon Belias to the arena. Belias will cast Time Eruption. This will split the arena into nine sections in a 3x3 grid, and each section will get a spinning clock inside it. The speed of the clock hand is what dictates the speed of that square exploding in an AoE. So you'll want to stand on a square that has a slow-moving hand and wait for the set of fast-moving clocks to explode. After they go off, you can move into them and avoid the AoEs of the slow-moving clocks. At the same time as this, Ultima will cast Holy Four and target several people with point-blank AoEs. These people will need to spread out while avoiding the other explosions. Finally, Ultima will cast Demi Leo. This will summon Hashmal to the arena. Hashmal will summon two small towers and cut them diagonally. They will start to fall in the direction that they were cut by sliding first and then falling in a long straight line AoE. Just move to the side or behind the cuts to avoid the falling towers. If you get hit by a falling tower, it will instantly kill you. During this mechanic, Holy Four AoEs below random alliance members will appear as well as more point blank AoEs on them. Dodge and avoid as much as you can. Ultima will then become untargetable and all three summons will reappear in the arena. They will all cast their mechanics at the same time. It will start out with an Earth Hammer being spawned in one point towards the outside of the arena and the floor changing into nine clocks. While dodging the clock hands, move away from where the Earth Hammer is located as this will be a proximity marker. Then one entire party will get red arrows over their heads. To solve this mechanic, you will need to not be alone, so you'll need to get close to another party member with a red arrow. If you fail to do this, it will throw you into the air, leaving you vulnerable for Earth Hammer. There will be jets of water of Dark Ewer as well as Belias appearing on one side of the arena to cleave either the north or south side depending on which one of their arms is glowing. There will also be a tracking AoE of Eruption underneath one player in each alliance. This AoE will spawn three times underneath the targeted players. Try to not run this AoE through any groups of people. That might be a bit hard as this part of the fight can get incredibly chaotic, just try and dodge through everything as best you can. Finally, they will all start casting their ultimate, which will be interrupted by the three hero forms of the bosses you've already defeated in the raid. Ultima will then start slow casting Ultimate Illusion. A dome shield will be created close to Ultima and you must stand inside it. If you're outside the dome when the cast ends, the ground will crumble beneath you and you'll be removed from existence. As you're in this small dome, all players will be taking constant damage from Ultimate Illusion. Healers be aware you'll need to throw out extra regens and heals. Ultima will try to break the shield. A bar labeled Barrier Strength will appear. If this reaches zero, the shield will break and you'll have to start again. Target the Ruination and destroy it quickly before it breaks the dome. After a few more seconds, the dome will dissipate and you'll be transported to the next area. This is a checkpoint, so if you wipe in this part of the fight, you'll restart from here. Redemption is a hard-hitting tank buster. Ultima will cast Demi Virgo. This cast will create straight line AoEs on the ground. Ultima will then cast either Eastward or Westward March. This will create a particle effect in the air that will show which way the wind is blowing. When the cast ends, there will be a small gust that will move the AoEs one space in the direction of the wind. So you're going to want to stand inside the AoEs to make sure that you avoid it when the gust blows it to the side. After another tank buster, Ultima will cast Grand Cross while casting another Eastward or Westward March. The Aura Sites will drop into the arena and the first two that drop in will be moved in the direction of the wind. Again, there is only one safe spot. Try your best to make it to the safe zone, but if you can't make it, don't worry about taking one beam with the Vuln stack. I normally try and sound out which rows or columns are going to be hit. In this example, B2 is going to be hit, but then Eastward March is cast, so I know it will move over one spot to C2. So column C and row 2 are out. The next one lands in the corner of A1, but will move over to B1, so now columns B and C are out, as well as rows 1 and 2. The last one lands right in the corner of A4, and won't move because it's the third one to land. So columns A, B, and C are out, which leaves D, and rows 1, 2, and 4 are out, which leaves 3. So the safe spot is D3. This mechanic is pretty difficult, especially for first-time players, and unless you're quick on the draw with what you can see, or you miss trying to follow the rest of the group, you'll probably take a beam to the face. And for this mechanic, that's okay. Ultima will cast another Demi Virgo. This one will spawn in six small circles on the ground with small arrows in them. These circles will move in the direction of the arrow. After the circles move four times, the circle will become hollow inside. Players will need to preemptively stand in these circles or quickly move into the last as it appears. If you do this, you will lose control of your character for a few seconds, but you've done the mechanic. You'll prevent the add from hitting the ground and giving everyone a Vuln stack. If too many of them hit the ground, it can wipe the alliance. If you do the mechanic correctly, you'll gain the buff of Fearless, which will give you an increase in damage dealt for a full minute. At the same time as this, the main tank will get a tank buster, so they cannot take one of the circles. The next cast of Demi Virgo will spawn in the untargetable Ad of Dominion. The Ad will create the blue AoEs that will periodically pulse around the arena. If you walk into this AoE, it will bind you in place, which may leave you unable to dodge the next few mechanics, but the debuff is assunerable. This Ad will tether to the closest player. If you have the tether, you'll get a dot tick for as long as you have it. Off tanks, you can run into the tether to intercept it and make sure that it's away from everyone else. Two casts of Holy Four with AoEs below random players and AoEs on random players will happen back to back. 
try to avoid the holy four AoEs and binding blue AoEs and spread out as best you can. It's at this point where Ultima will normally cast Cataclysm and knock everyone to the back of the arena while also giving them the debuff of Out of Action which renders your abilities useless for a while. The area will get very dark and Ultima will create a maze for everyone to try and work their way through. There will be small AoEs that may come across your path which you'll have to dodge around. Several players will also get Acceleration Bomb. You will need to not be moving when the timer reaches zero or else you get a very hard hit. Now you can't take too long with this as the wall will slowly move up and start consuming the maze. The longer you take, the more the wall will move. If you're caught in the wall, you will instantly die. Once you make it to Ultima's hitbox, you'll regain your abilities again. Watch out if you get a holy four point blank AoE or a personal proximity flare marker. You'll need to get out of the hitbox and take it away from the rest of the party to avoid any extra unnecessary damage. After a while of beating up Ultima, the arena will return to normal. The entire Cataclysm phase can be skipped if you do enough DPS to Ultima. From here, mechanics will begin to overlap and repeat until Ultima has been defeated. Congratulations, you have completed the Orborn Monastery. My name is The Scrub. Thank you for watching.